Our next speaker is Incio, and he's going to talk about fast continuous subgraph matching in streaming graphs. Hello, I am In So from Postec, South Korea. I'm here to present TurboFlux, which is a system that supports subgraph matching for streaming graph data. When a query graph Q and an initial data graph G0 are given, subgraph matching can find initial matches that are the subgraphs of G0 matching the query graph Q. In our problem, continuous subgraph matching a data graph is continuously updated. When an, edge is, when an edge is inserted, some new matching results may emerge and we call these positive matches. When an edge is deleted, some existing results can be deleted and we call these negative matches. Then continuous subgraph matching is a problem of finding all positive and negative matches from an initial data graph and a, a series of graph updates. With graph data, we can use relationships to process financial and purchase tra transactions in your real time to easily detect fraud patterns. Continuous subgraph matching can help detect re relationship patterns like multiple people associated with a personal email address or multiple people sharing the same IP address but residing in different physical addresses. In order to support continuous subgraph matching, some systems like Inkisomat, Graphflow, and SJ3 are proposed. When a data graph is updated, Inkisomat and Graphflow start. Uh, Inkisomat and Graphflow search only the small part of the data graph. Around where, around where the update occurs. However, their performance is limited because whenever a data graph is updated, they should start matching from scratch. The other system, SJ3, show better performance than Inquisomat and Graphflow because SJ3 materialized partial solutions and use them to find positive matches for later updates. In SJ3, it decomposes a query graph Q into a set of smaller subqueries, and it materializes all partial solutions matching those subqueries. And when an update occurs, it recursively performs joint operations to update those partial solutions and find positive matches if they exist. However, SJ3 also has a serious performance problem with maintaining the enormous size of partial solutions. In this example, the size of partial solutions increases twice by a single edge insertion, even though there is no positive matches to report. Moreover, the space complexity of SJ3 increases ex exponentially in the worst case. In order to resolve these problems of existing systems, we proposed a new system, TurboFlux, with these main contributions. First, we proposed the data-centric graph, DCG for short, which is a novel representation for storing partial solutions, very concisely. Uh, second, we proposed the ad, a former model named edge transition model to maintain the DCG for each update operation. By using the DCG and edge transition model, TurboFlux uh, performs the state of the art systems by orders of magnitude. The DCG is a labeled graph that stores, uh, the source candidate query vertices of each data vertex as its incoming edges. A labeled edge in the DCG, denoted as V U prime V prime, has a query vertex ID as its label. All edges in the DCG have one of the three states, explicit, implicit, and null. 
Uh, I'm going to briefly introduce these three types of edges using a simple example. Here we have a query graph Q and a data graph G. A data edge V0, V3 matches a query edge U0, U2. And V3 also has a subtree that matches the subtree of U2. So this match can contribute to a complete solution. So DCG stores this match as an explicit edge U2, V2, V2, U2, V3 as shown in the figure at the right side. However, another data edge V0, V0, V2 matches the same query edge U0, U2, but this match cannot contribute to a complete solution because V2 does not have any subtree that matches the subtree of U2. In this case, the DCG stores this match as an implicit edge V0, U2, V2 as shown in this figure. Lastly, null edges are not shown in this figure because they are just hypothetical edges for explaining the edge transition model. Therefore, we do not store them in the DCG. The edge transition model maintains the DCG for each update operation. It has six transition rules that explain how the states of the edges in the DCG are transited from one to another. I will explain how the transition rules can modify the DCG if uh, a new edge is inserted into the data graph. Here, the inserted edge V0, V1 matches the query edge U0, U1. So we transit the state of this edge V0, U1, V1 from null to implicit by the transition rule 1. Here, the query vertex U1 does not have any subtree to match, so we transit the state of this edge V0, U1, V1 from implicit to explicit by the transition rule 2. Finally, V0 has a subtree that matches the entire query graph Q, so we transit the state of this edge whose label is U0 from implicit to explicit. Then we execute the subgraph matching and find one positive match. In TurboFlux, we execute subgraph matching only when the DCG has an explicit edge whose label is U0. And in subgraph matching, we can find all positive matches by using the explicit edges only. Here are experimental results. TurboFlux consistently and significantly outperforms all the competitors. Specifically, TurboFlux outperforms SJ3 and GraphFlow in terms of query time by up to more than 300 and 1,000 times respectively. Also, since the DCG stores partial solutions very concisely, the intermediate result size of TurboFlux is smaller than that of SJ3, more than 100 times. To conclude, TurboFlux is the fast continuous software matching system, and we propose the DCG to store partial solutions very concisely. The edge transition model can identify which update can modify the DCG and contribute to positive or negative matches. Finally, we showed that TurboFlux outperforms existing systems by orders of magnitude. These are references for this presentation, and thank you for listening. Any questions? Okay, so let me ask you one question on, so for every update, you are basically con making a concise representation using DCG, right? So if your update increases, the number of updates increases, how does it behave over time? So as you have more and more and more updates, so how is the performance over time? Uh, in our paper, we conduct an experiment by varying the number of insertion stream, size of insertion stream, and the, our query cost, query time was increased by linearly. And 
uh, in that experiment, Turboflux consistently outperforms, outperforms all the competitors. Yeah. Is there any question? Okay, so uh, let's thank the.